what I want to talk to you about is what makes up our muscle. So before we talk about how it grows, we need to know what it consists of. Now, 75% of your muscle is made up of water, okay? That's what it mainly consists of. Then we have about 10 to 15%, which is myofibrillar protein. And myofibrillar protein is like the actin, filaments, and the myosin heads, the, the actual contractile parts of the muscle that are involved in the power stroke that shorten the muscle. So 10 to 15% is myofibrillar protein. This is the, the, the kind of business part of the muscle. Then we've got 5%, which is sarcoplasmic protein. So you're going to have like your mitochondria, uh, your sarcoplasmic reticulum. Um, you're going to have um, uh, molecules that are like glyco um, glycolysis molecules, etc. So you're going to have kind of non uh, myofibrillar content in there as well. So anything which is in the sarcoplasm is what you would consider uh, the normal cellular contents that you have. And, and so uh, the nucleus would come under there as well. And you've got your ribosomes and all of those uh, molecules as well. However, when we look at what takes up most of the space, although we've got 10 to 15% myofibrillar protein, it actually takes up the majority of the space within the muscle belly or within uh, the fibre itself. If we were to slice it open, we'd see that 85% of the space is taken up by the myofibrils, those individual strands that contain actin and myosin. So the myofibrils contain actin and myosin. We also have troponin and tropomyosin, which are important for that cross-bridge formation and the power stroke for muscle contraction. We've got proteins for structural integrity, for example, titan. Um, and so these are all arranged um, uh, quite closely packed together uh, in these bundles and uh, we've got literally millions of these bundles uh, and, fi and fibres that are in our, within our muscle. So that's what makes up our muscle. So then we think about what is myofibrillar hypertrophy? So in its basic and most straightforward definition, it's when the myofibrillar part of the muscle, the part that contains the actin and myosin, which are commonly referred to as the sarcomere, okay, which we can see here, um, th those actually become larger. They increase in size and they increase in number as well. We also have an increase in connective tissue as well, so uh, we have an increase in extracellular matrix, so the outer parts of the muscle, the perimyceum, uh, the endomyceum, epimyceum, etc., they also increase in size as well. And likewise, our tendons increase, so the collagen deposition within our tendons is increased because they have more load going through them. If I start doing resistance training, then the, the, the force that's all the load that's going through the, the, the tendon increases and so there's an adaptation and if we look back to what we were talking about last week with the Golgi tendon organ, the Golgi tendon organ is then able to tolerate a much greater load before it sends an inhibitory signal to the alpha motor neuron to inhibit the contraction. Okay, So the tendons become larger uh, but most important it's these sarcomeres and when we look at this diagram here the sarcomeres are added in parallel to each other and what I want to do is, and obviously the diameter of the individual fibres has increased as well, so you get an increase in cross-sectional area. Now, what I want to just quickly do is go to the dot cam. Um, so a muscle here, okay, I know this looks a little bit like I'm drawing a spliff, but um, I can assure you it's not. So this is your tendon, okay, we can put that in with a different colour. So your tendon attaching your muscle to your bone. Uh, and this is a cross-section area of the muscle. So we've kind of just sliced through the muscle. And essentially what's happening with myofibrillar hypertrophy. So you've got these, uh, each muscle fibre is going to have your actin and myosin. It's going to have your sarcomeres, which contain your actin and myosin. Okay? So you've got these um, individual strands. Now with myofibrillar hypertrophy, what's going to happen is these strands are going to increase in number. So we'll get the formation of new strands okay uh, and so basically by doing that we're going to have an increase in the bundle size but these individual fibers will also increase in size so i'll draw a slightly thicker one here okay and then we've got these increase and essentially what they do is they push this is the sarcolemma this is kind of like the uh, membrane of the muscle cell okay or the muscle belly they push these growth in fibers push on the sarcolemma Okay, and the muscle fiber cross-sectional area will increase. So there's an increase in fiber, so F, cross-sectional area. 
So that's what happens with uh, uh, the Musaf. We're having an increase in um, uh, sarcomeres being added in parallel, um, and that's increasing the number of fibres, the new myofibres and myofilaments, uh, and also the thickness of those filaments as well. This is all, as we shall see in a couple of slides time, um, all the, the kind of uh, knowledge from most recent research as well. Uh, so that's essentially what's happening. Now, whilst we're on this diagram, uh, I talked about the tendon. So the tendon will also so, so this is the tendon before, but essentially the tendon will adapt and become thicker as well. So if I just kind of draw a, an outline of what you would expect after a, you know, a, a couple of weeks, if not months, of resistance training, it would probably be better to say like after, say, six to eight weeks of uh, resistance training, we'll have an increase in uh, collagen deposition as well in, in the fibres here. So I'll just put here increased collagen deposition. And essentially, that's what's uh, causing, that's what's happening here. It's making the tendon larger, thicker, more able to uh, transmit the load to the bone and tolerate force, and also inhibits the effects, or sorry, allows the Golgi tendon organ to have a higher threshold before it sends inhibitory signals. So that's what's happening with that. Um, if I uh, 